So as long as I'm thinking four four bar phrases with that thing that doesn't have chord changes in it or doesn't change, I can still organize what I play in the same way that I would if it were over a song that did have chords. So that sounds like this. Check it out. Check it out. Especially in a groove situation. Like, the thing about phrasing, which is how we organize the melodies that we play, or the, the, the ideas that we play, when we play them, where they start, where they end. That's one definition of that word for me. Um, if you're presented with a song form, it's like a function of form. Like, usually when people play, when they improvise, take solos, whatever, they do it in a song, over a song. They're playing in a band, there's a part of the song where it's time for a guitar solo, let's say, or any kind of solo. To a degree, like what people do phrasing-wise in those situations is kind of dictated by the form. Like, check it out, if there was, um, if there was a song that had a form like, uh, let's see, like, um, like, um, um, you know. Like when I play over that, the chords are gonna tell me when to play. Check it out. changing tell me when I need to play melodies to address those chords. But what if there are no chords? Like in a jam situation when you're just grooving out on, in some key, some people call that playing one chord. I don't like to call it that because I like to change the chords even if there's just one tonal center, if it's in D. I don't want to th have to think D minor for half an hour. So to me it's just D anything. But typically people say, yeah, we'll just groove in D minor for a while. Like when you say that, there's no song form attached to it. So that's when the phrasing gets a little confused. And typically in jams, like in my experience, when I hear jams, other people doing them, or when I'm in one, and there's no attention paid to the form, that's when it gets rambly. That's when ideas, for me, just kind of shoot off into space without any real uh, anchor for the other people in the band to hang on to. Because what, you know, whoever it is, what Jerry Garcia was thinking about where one is of the form, uh, you know, Phil Lesh, the bass player of the Grateful Dead, might have been thinking something else was one of the form. So what's the result of that? The result of that kind of jamming is that sometimes it sounds good and sometimes it doesn't. Now that's okay if we're just hanging out with our friends and there's no audience. But if people are paying to see it, that's when I start feeling responsibility about trying to make it, make it as good as it can be every time. Maybe it's not quite as great as it was last night or tomorrow night, but still pretty good. And one real important factor relating to phrasing that has to do with that is what kind of forms we play. So even if it's a groove without chord changes to tell us, we borrow the same kinds of forms from songs that do have chords in them. For me, that's four, eight, and 16 bars. Like, check it out. If I'm playing this, uh, you know, like, one, two, three, uh, four, Right? Uh, one, two, three, 
So as long as I'm thinking four four bar phrases with that thing that doesn't have chord changes in it or doesn't change, I can still organize what I play in the same way that I would if it were over a song that did have chords. So that sounds like this. Check it out. off the grid. organizing what I'm playing as if the entire, which, the, which you'd have to have this conversation with the entire band, like the entire band is phrasing in four and eight bar phrases and 16 bar phrases. So all the fills that happen, have you, you probably had this experience. I remember before I started realizing, oh yeah, we have to use form when we, when we jam. Because if we don't, it's just half the time it's unlistenable. Um, if you were playing with a drummer, for example, and you haven't had this conversation with them, a lot of drummers naturally phrase like that because they grow up playing R&B, funk, rock to some degree. And they just automatically phrase in fours and eights. But unless you really tell them that's what you're going to do, sometimes they can let it slide, especially if what you're playing is confusing because they might hear that as, oh, he's, he's giving up the form, so I'll just do whatever I want. Um, but unless you do agree on that, you'll hear like drummers filling into beat three and stuff. Like you're jamming and you got your phrase in your head and you think it's going like this and all of a sudden the drummer just did a fill like on one and came in on beat two as if it were the new one and you kind of have to shift over and all that kind of stuff, which, which translates to like lack of clarity in the band. Like there's no way, unless everybody's on the same page when, in a jam with each other in terms of where the phrase is, it's exactly like you're playing a song. It's just like you're playing Smoke on the Water and the bass player is playing the bridge while you're playing the verse. It's the same thing. You're not in the same place. That can accidentally sound good, but it'll never sound good consistently. And most of the time it doesn't sound good. So that's the biggest thing about phrasing I can relate, I can say, is it relates very strongly to the form. Try it the next time you do a jam with your friends in F for an hour, um, have a conversation about, can we keep like 
four bars straight. Like one, one way to practice that that sometimes uh, can be helpful is um, like sometimes if I'm trying to kind of figure some out rhythms out or something in 4-4 four, four, or in any time signature, I do this thing where I count quarter notes with my right hand and bars with my left. So it looks like one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two. That's one of the phrase. Two, three, three, four. So then an idea can be like, down, one, two, three, four. Down, good day, good day, boom, be day. Check it, check. Down, good day, good day, boom, to down, go bat it down. Got a kid again, go, two, three, uh. Got a good day, gang, go, uh. Chaka chaka crash, catch stooch. Like that thing where I was doing that note at the end, if the drummer didn't know that you were going to resolve that on the first beat of the phrase, they'd think, what is this? Where are we? What are we doing here? And maybe they do a fill into the end of four or something. So, this idea of having phrase in your head, the band together. I mean, I can tell you that, you know, most of what I've done in the last 20 years anyway with trio has been largely improvised. And the thing that unites us, the thing that makes it possible for us to sound like we know what we're doing, among many other things, is we share a phrase. There's no phrase written. Like on the piece of paper that I give the guys when I write something, it's just, it's just one bar with repeats around it and it says open E flat. That's it. But they know because we've had the conversation that everything that we do, everything, is phrased in four eighths or sixteens. And that unifies us. It makes it possible to make these drastic left turns in the music all the time together. It lets us know where to create tension and when to resolve it. Um, I could never be comfortable in a groove situation, an open groove situation, without that. I'd feel lost. And, you know, it, it is a limitation, right? You could say artistically that is a limitation that we have. And it's true. But within that limitation, there are many, many, many things to do.